Less drunk. The Adventures of Mighty Max for Super Nintendo is not particularly mighty, nor is it much of an adventure, unless you consider horrifically bad controls to be your kind of adventure. Yes, that's right, it's another SNES action platformer where the developer tried to get way too cute, because why bother making a game that has actual functional controls when you can reinvent the wheel? Sure, it's still B to jump and Y to attack, but just look at this jump, and look how freaking fast you move around, jeez louise. It's like you're flailing out of control at just the mere tap of the D-pad, it is ridiculous. To give you an idea of where this franchise stood in the grand scheme of things, this game was developed by a small team under Ocean Software, the same folks that brought you such classics as Dennis the Menace, Cool World, The Flintstones, Waterworld. Yeah, they had every mediocre, uninspired, movie-based game on lockdown, but they clearly weren't satisfied with just half-assed movie-licensed games. They had to make a crappy TV-licensed game too. And yeah, it turns out that Adventures of Mighty Max is based off of a cartoon simply called Mighty Max that lasted 40 episodes between 19 1993 and 94, and that cartoon was based on a line of Mighty Max toys created in the UK at around the same time. The story here is that your title character Max gets a mysterious message that leads him to find a hat that gives him powers to teleport across time and space. So of course he's got all sorts of supervillains chasing after him so they can obtain this power for evil. There are three playable characters total, and who is this guy, Ron Weasley? What is this, Harry Potter and the 90s ass generic platformer? Okay, maybe I'm being a little too hard on this game, because it does present some cool ideas. For one thing, it's got the Mega Man style approach of being able to choose which levels you want to complete in whatever order. It even gives you a preview of what kind of enemies you can expect in each level. You have a life bar and five lives and three continues to get through five levels split up into two stages each, and the goal of each level is to move random stuff around until you get it into this portal thing. And you do that by, well, dragging them around and picking them up and throwing them around. There's a helpful arrow at the top of the screen that shows you where the portal is, so you just drag all this stuff, follow the arrow, and defeat a bunch of enemies along the way. Kind of a cool idea in theory, but the controls in this game are so bad. The characters are just way too quick for their own good, and the jump is just beyond awful. In the past, I've talked a lot about balance in a game, and this is a perfect example of something being completely unbalanced. The level design does a terrible job matching your character's capabilities, and that, for me, is the biggest deal breaker for a game. And have I mentioned how terrible this jump is? What is this dude, Vince Carter? I should mention that this game is two-player co-op, and hey, that's always fun. How could you screw that up? Well, this is how. It's split-screen. Kind of a problem when your characters have the ability to jump 90 feet into the air and you can't see where the heck you're going, or where you're gonna land, or what enemies are around, or anything. Ugh. I will give the game a bit of credit, though. There's a puzzle element here that's kind of neat, and it can be kind of challenging, you know, in a good way, to try and find a way to move objects around to where they're supposed to go. Some methods are pretty obvious, like attaching something to a balloon so it floats upward, or by tossing stuff on moving platforms, or flipping the switch to change the rotation of this conveyor belt. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of unintuitive stuff here, too. This is one of those games where you gotta try and mess with everything, and that can be a bit of a problem because each stage has a time limit, so you can't dawdle along for too long. There's other stuff here too, like this megaphone you can pick up that will summon Norman, another character from the show, and he just kind of uh, hangs out for a bit and takes out a couple enemies and then just leaves, I guess. I should point out very quickly here that this game also received a Sega Genesis version, but it appears to be the same game for the most part, although the instruction book for that edition came with a Mighty Max comic, which is pretty cool. I wasn't able to find a Super Nintendo manual, but if you have one, or if you find one, let me know in the comments. I'd be curious to know if that one got a comic too. So yeah, Adventures of Mighty Max isn't the worst game in the world, but I can't really recommend it either. I just don't understand what the developers were thinking when they made the controls like this. They're so incredibly loose that it feels like you're just barely keeping your character under control. And that, to me, is a big time deal breaker. Another telling sign to me about this one is that there isn't even a walkthrough available for it on GameFAQs, or even a speedrun video or anything like that. I mean, geez, even Lester the Unlikely has a walkthrough. There are some good ideas in this game, but they're just implemented very poorly, so unfortunately I would have to say to avoid this one. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.